as we said before in the previous slide that companies pursue TQ total quality in order to satisfy customers and they want and, and they should provide more than the expectations of the cost of their customers exceed than the expectations of their customers so we can say that organizations now become customer driven organizations they search about what make their customers satisfying satisfied sorry and in order to achieve it so what about quality before before this direction or before their adoption to this view which is customer driven organizations in other words is the concern or focus with the quality is born nowadays of course no well developed quality systems have existed in manufacturing for some time ago however the shape or the direction of the concern was different previously than nowadays previously the focus was on technical issues such as equipment reliability inspection defect me measurement and process control this means that companies were thinking that when they focus or concern with uh, reliability of their equipment uh, making inspections uh, making continuous inspection for their equipment and for their products uh, produced uh, and also measuring defects and uh, concerning with uh, control process so so they were thinking that concerning or taking in their consideration all of these issues will result in attaining equality this is uh, for some degree is right because when organization focus or concern or uh, giving more interest to uh, reliability of its equipment and also uh, measuring defects and also uh, control process concerning with control process of course this will result in product uh, lacking any defects so it will satisfy customers but what what is what is the difference what's the difference between the previous concern and customer driven organization the difference is when i as an organization i speak about myself as organization when i concern with customer so this means that i also take the opinion of the customer in designing products uh, take the opinion of customers what he or she needs to uh, uh, to see in the product what will attract them so customers also have an opinion not only of organizations and uh, not only manufacturing or engineering departments however similar to every change in the world it has its impact so also change or transmission trans uh, transition to sorry transition to customer driven organizations has also produced or has caused some changes in the organization especially in manufacturing practices uh, this involved changes to product design human resources management and supplier relations for example in product design activity has become closely integrated integrate to marketing engineering and manufacturing operations in other words designing the product not restricted only to how to design product similar uh, according to the opinion or according to the view of the company or organization but also when company design products now they consider the opinion of customers so of course they need to make relationships or uh, design product uh, department need to make relationship or integrate with marketing department because marketing departments will provide them 
what is the opinion of customers what customers want to, to see or uh, how, how customers want uh, the product uh, process or uh, working for them so the, of course there should be a link between designing product or uh, sorry between product design department and marketing department and here uh, we can see what is the role of customers uh, and how customer driven organization uh, is different than just only focusing on uh, treating or dealing with technical issues as uh, situation uh, before also also human resource uh, activities uh, have affected by this trans uh, transmission to customer driven organization uh, for example uh, human resource department now uh, uh, provide or concentrate or give more concentration on empowering employees to uh, why to collect and analyze data because uh, of course you know uh, uh, from from those employees some of them uh, are working as custom, uh, customer service in customer service department so of course they are in contact uh, in um, close contact with customers so of course they know a lot uh, from customers I mean they know opinion of their customers they hear a lot of their complaints about any defects in the product about any issues they don't like in the product or in the service delivered to them so uh, uh, frontline employees who are uh, in uh, closely touch with customers have a lot of information they know so of course I need to empower those employees in order to benefit from the information and data they have to collect it to collect them and analyze them in order to make critical uh, uh, that will help me in making uh, effective decisions and also uh, improving critical operations uh, and making a continuous improvement for my products that I produce and deliver to customers so also uh, uh, transition tra uh, transmission to uh, to be customer driven organization also affected human resource department moreover the transmission to be to being customer driven organization also affects the relationship between organization and uh, its suppliers uh, for example uh, I, uh, as an organization I should take care of which supplier I should deal with him or with her in order to provide me with the specific qualifications that I want to see in the raw materials that I will use later in producing the product or designing my product and manufacturing process in general so being uh, or yes being a customer driven organization or transmission to to be customer driven organization have not only affect in the internal departments inside organizations such as product design department and uh, human resource department but also affect uh, the relationship uh, uh, the external relationship between organizations and their suppliers Many of these efforts were stimulated the automobile industry, which forces their network of suppliers to improve quality. Another example we can see also in uh, a chain of uh, supermarkets such as Metro uh, or La Draga. Uh, many of these chains of supermarkets uh, should, uh, and they already do it, uh, take care when they select their suppliers. Uh, suppliers with uh, organic uh, vegetables and uh, fruits, uh, suppliers with meats and chicken, uh, suppliers with uh, grocery items, which of rice, which brand of pasta, which brand of uh, of tea or sugar, and uh, not only uh, they search about the good brand, uh, but also they search about the supplier who provides them these uh, items uh, in loss and also uh, stored uh, these items 
in good manner so it will be still in a good manner when they provide to customers so the transmission to customer to being customers organizations force or um, ask organization to consider with opinion of customers to take it in its consideration which will affect uh, their way, uh, the organization's way in making product to treating the suppliers and also organization's way in treating with its employees the last point I want to discuss in this slide is what are the, co the, the quality dimensions what are the dimensions or criteria that companies use in order to uh, determine is this product qualified or not uh, is this produced according to their standards or not as you see in the slides there are eight dimensions the first one is performance which means a product's primary operating characteristics number two features is built and bushels of a product features mean the uh, the characteristics or criteria or that differentiate your product rather from some other products from competitors provided by the competitors number three reliability reliability means profitability of a product surviving over a specified period of time under stated conditions of use uh, I will not speak now about number four but I will speak about number five durability because there are some uh, interrelations or some confusion in understanding between reliability and durability durability means uh, the amount of use one gets from a product before it physically deteriorated or until replacement is preferable what is the confusion between both of them between number three and number five in other words what is the difference between uh, our saying that this product can be survived for example for one year or for uh, sorry yes uh, two years for example for two years if it is uh, stored in for example if I speak about uh, caring, uh, products of caring with hair or caring with skin or body you can see that on the package it is written that expired date for example October 2023 however you can see on the package uh, sign that means that uh, when the package is opened so if it is opened it will if it open it will be valid only for nine months so instead of uh, uh, products of skincare valid for um, uh, for three years from now until October 2023 so it will be valid only for three for nine months why nine months because this is or what the name of nine months nine months is referred to durability durability as we said the amount of use one gets from a product so the expired date is by mentioned by mentioned to be only for, if, instead of three years it become nine months you can see this example or you can see this by yourself if you look to any product or of skincare for example if you look to sunscreen for example sunscreen uh, cream or sunscreen sunscreen cream you will find that it is valid for example two years but if it is open it will be valid only for nine months so the durability the amount of time that you can benefit from this product after it is opening it will be nine months but if it is not open, it's still, uh, it is uh, closed by in its package, so it can be valid until 2023, for example, two years or three years from now. So there's the difference between reliability and durability. Uh, number four, conformance, the degree to which physical and performance characteristics of a product match pre-established standards. Uh, as you know, when uh, as a company, when it plan to produce uh, any product, 
so of course uh, uh, it, ha it has uh, specific standards, specific qualification. So after the product is already finished or already produced, uh, the companies al always test a sample of this product in order to see to which degree there's matching between the pre-established criteria, pre-established standards, and the real uh, sta uh, the real criteria existed in the final product. Number seven, serv serviceability, uh, which means the ability to repair a product quickly and easily. This means that uh, is there, for example, a lot of uh, maintenance centers for the final product. If, for example, if I speak about uh, fridge or air condition, is uh, uh, there are a lot of maintenance centers created over uh, public uh, uh, Arab Republic of Egypt, or there are only few centers and in uh, few places so it, uh, the customer will find difficulty in repairing a product uh, number uh, seven aesthetics uh, it means how a product looks feels sounds tastes or smells uh, total descriptions about a product um, uh, that deal with every with all its dimensions uh, what is the uh, for example, what is the, the shape of the package looks like? Uh, what uh, the, the smell or the taste? So different dimensions. Num last point is perceived quality. Means that uh, subjective assessment. And if I ask you what the mean uh, perceived quality or how perceived quality for me. Uh, is subject, uh, perceived quality is subjective assessment resulting from image, your image as a customer uh, and your image of course um, formed by uh, to some degree by the advertising you see uh, or to hear about this product by what you hear about this brand name from other customers so this is perceived quality something subjective uh, it is not your opinion but uh, other opinions and you affected by, uh, by the other opinions so if they are positive, uh, your opinion also will be positive and not only affected by uh, or in the beginning your opinion of course affected by the, the opinions that you hear or the image uh, you hear or you know about that product but of course if you try, uh, try it by yourself this product you, of course you have your opinion your opinion either uh, agree or disagree with other opinions all of these eight dimensions uh, reflect uh, quality dimensions of the product and uh, help organizations to test their products uh, after they provide to uh, customers in the market. Uh, now uh, let us let's go to uh, know what uh, how quality uh, process is applied or pursued in uh, service sectors. Uh, is there any difference between both of uh, manufacturing and sector? So let's go to the uh, last slide in, in this lecture today. Quality and service sector. In the beginning, we need to define what is mean by service sector. What we mean by service? Of course, a lot of you know what the mean of service because you are students in the final year of faculty of commerce so I think you meet this uh, definition or this concept many times ago in previous years uh, but just for remembering service can be defined as any primary complementary activity that does not directly produce a physical product so it is intangible product so it cannot touch uh, is not physical product that is language is part of uh, transition between buyer customer and the seller which is provider uh, service might be uh, as simple as handling a complaint complaint uh, handling a complaint you have a complaint about a, a service provided to you for example in the hotel in the restaurant
and so you you what is your complaint complaint to do front line is is to do it uh, sometimes also or it be the type of service be complex such as uh, providing the home washing uh, such as also the service that you So different types of service. Uh, example about service organization, as I said, it uh, include hotel help, uh, which means hospital, uh, other professional service, educational institution, institutions, uh, universities, for example, also provide uh, services, uh, financial services like bank, like banks. Uh, Many, uh, and also transportations, uh, public utilities, if you go to council. Uh, so all of these uh, organizations provide service, not providing products. So uh, the thing that you, they provide is intangible, not tangible. You, you cannot touch in your hand, you cannot uh, put your hand on it. Um, of course, if I ask you now, uh, what is the difference, or is there is, uh, do you see that there is uh, some difficulty in pursuing quality in the service sector? Of course, the first point that should come to your mind that uh, service sectors or service organizations are providing intangible products. So, how I can mm, pursue quality in something I cannot touch in my hand? So let's see or let's discuss together why service organizations find difficulty in pursuing quality. As you see, there are four reasons, and if you look to other tickets or other, if you look to other tickets, maybe you can find uh, more than these four reasons. You can find five, six, seven. So let, let let's discuss these reasons and also search or think about other reasons. For example, number one, difficulty in identifying customers' needs. Customers' needs and performance standards are often difficult and measure in service sector because, as I said, they supply uh, the desires or wants or needs of customers are different from one to another. So every customer defines his or her need according to uh, his desire, of course, uh, from their, uh, from his or her viewpoint. So there is difficulty in identifying these needs, uh, the standards that matching these needs or attaining these needs, uh, because each customer is different. Uh, number two, production of services require a higher degree of customization. What does it mean that? Uh, for example, if I look, uh, if I look to uh, producing car or producing a mobile and uh, providing service by doctors. Uh, for example, uh, if for example I speak about Nokia mobile, any type of mobile. This mobile has specific qualifications that uh, involved in each piece of Nokia. Whatever this piece will be used by customer X or by customer Y. Uh, any customers or uh, those who prefer Nokia know the qualities of Nokia mobile. So if they decided that they will buy Nokia mobile, so they should agree about this quality. If they not agree about it, so they can search about another product. Okay, this is regarding product. What about service? If we look, for example, to the service provided by the doctor uh, or by insurance companies, uh, the patient coming to the doctor. Uh, of course, they have different qualities, different health. Uh, so, when they speak to the doctors, the doctor not only required to treat them physically, but also 
Houdini is then psychologically stick to the patient and say, don't worry, uh, your sick is not dangerous, it is easy, the surgery is not difficult, it is easy, so try to facilitate the issue. So the doctor is providing service which is treating the or dealing with the disease and sick, uh, sick, sickness of this patient but also treat him or her psychologically. So the degree of uh, dealing psychologically, psychologically with every patient is different from one patient to another. One patient needs from the doctor a lot of speaking, a lot of explanation for his or her disease. Another one, no, uh, he already psychologically supported by himself or herself or by uh, his family or through he, his face in God. So uh, he or she don't need a lot of, of psychological support from the doctor. Uh, some of them uh, know a lot of uh, his sick or his disease. Uh, so he didn't need a lot of explanation about what is this uh, uh, illness or what it means or what is that uh, that required the treatments. So different different patients need different ways of treatment. So here we lost something called customization in mobile. There is specific degree of customizations. All mobiles produced according to Nokia company should follow this degree of customization. But in dealing with service, because we cannot identify customers' needs, uh, so we don't know or we cannot identify what the degree, suitable degree of customization that can be suitable to all customers. Number three, uh, as I said, intangibility, uh, intangibility of the service. Uh, service is intangible product. Uh, so the companies now, or uh, service sector, service organizations, will find difficulty how to assess a quality of their service because they assess quality of their service according to customers subjective expectations and past experience if the customer said uh, that yeah i i had you with, this, with the service provided from hotel x so the hotel said that yes i i provide uh, good service and my customers are satisfied by the service that i provide to them however if the customers say that no uh, I'm dissatisfied. I'm not happy with the service uh, you provide to me. So this will give a reflection uh, or an indicator to the hotel that you need to improve the service that you provide to your customer. So uh, there is no uh, criteria I can uh, touch or can keep in my hand similar to manufacturing uh, sector. Uh, number four, services are labor intensive. Uh, this view that providing service uh, means that uh, as a company or as a hotel or as a, a hospital need a lot of uh, labor in order to provide service to a lot of customers. So here the quality of human interaction with customers is a vital factor for service for succeeding service or making it fail uh, because it involves human contract for example uh, if i speak about hospital so uh, the quality of hospital care from uh, customers opinion or from patients opinion depended heavily on their interactions with nurses doctors and other medical staff. If they providing uh, uh, health service to uh, to patients, uh, just only health service, without uh, smiling in, uh, in the faces of patients, 
without uh, speaking with them what do you feel now uh, inshallah you will be better tomorrow uh, your uh, your situation is uh, i see your situation is improving without psychological support so uh, patients feel, will feel that they, they are psychologically ignored you cannot as, as advice i can say to you you cannot deal with a human as a machine in in human contact you need to care or to consider to focus more about psychological feelings about uh, psychological contact psychological support you need to support the person that you deal with them uh, also another point that also can come to your mind or you can find in different figures uh, and this is one of the things that differentiate service and um, service sectors and manufacturing sector is that services are produced and consumed stimulously at the same time it produced and delivered and consumed so there is no time to repair any defects and if you repair any defects or any faults so it will be already appear due to customers or to uh, for example if I uh, if a customer is coming to hotel and uh, check uh, check in yes check in time uh, for example is ten o'clock in the morning uh, and I delayed him until two o'clock so what will be the feelings of this customer of course he will be angry I coming to I'm coming to the hotel in order to be comfortable to take a bed and uh, enjoy with my time but you produce to me uh, or result to me wasting time from 10 o'clock 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. 2 p.m. so of course he will be not satisfied so even you try to deal with this this uh, with this default well, the time will be gone in other words what is the benefit that you can say to me that uh, don't worry uh, we can compensate you and uh, these for example four hours you delayed in entering your room so you will take uh, we compensate you uh, at the end of your uh, stay with us and uh, extend it four hours what is the benefit it is not benefit for me it is not beneficial for me uh, however for example in manufacturing uh, sector uh, manufactured manufactured goods are produced prior to consumption so if there is any fault in uh, in the process of the product of course as a company I test uh, my product or I put it in the market so I put them in the market so if there is any fault I can uh, uh, treat I have a time to treat it uh, even if this, even this will produce for, for me delay in providing my product in the market and also will result in costs uh, for me but uh, I see that the costs of wasting customers is high really high than costs of um, repeating producing a product the last point is what are the dimensions, quality dimensions of the service? What are the dimensions that should be involved in the service provided to the customer in order to say to can to say that it is qualified service? Or I, as an organization, I I can say I provided qualified service to my customers. As you see, there are also uh, dimensions uh, in order to saying that this is qualified service. Number one, time, how much time the customer wait. So if the customer wait a long time, of course, he or she will be dissatisfied, not happy about the service provided. Uh, and we can see this in the bank sector. Uh, number two, timelines. Will the service be performed when promised? For example, if I make an order uh, to, to, uh, to Kentucky, for example, I want uh, X meal. Uh, cordon blue meal for example 
uh, when and I'll then I ask it uh, customer service employee when it can be ready then he says uh, quarter minutes uh, and after quarter minutes and then uh, half an hour has gone and nothing has already uh, delivered to me so of course I will be dissatisfied completeness uh, are all times in the order included items are all items in the order included uh, for example if uh, I make online shopping and uh, ordered uh, 10 items and uh, put them in the basket shopping basket and uh, when I receive my items I found uh, I found them only seven so there are three missed items of course I will not be happy because happy because I will call the supermarket again uh, why uh, do you miss uh, items X Y Z why I put them in the shopping basket uh, of course I will not be happy number number four courtesy do frontline employees greet each customer cheerfully in this point uh, mention to the human contact the role of human contact between frontline employees between uh, provider uh, providing service customer uh, between employee providing service and the uh, customer so if the frontline employee employee dealing with customer cheerful uh, smiling uh, psychologically support him or her so of course this will affect uh, customer feelings and feel very very satisfied about the service maybe they uh, this can make the customer not see some defaults in the service because uh, he is already at attracted or uh, frontline employee has attracted him or attracted her uh, by his or her good way of dealing number five constancy our services delivered in the same fashion for every customer and every time for the same customer this means that organization not differentiate between uh, its customers all customers are the same there is no priority for one rather than the other there is a queue uh, that you will stand all of you in, in this queue if there is no priority for one because for example he has a specific power or he has a, uh, his manager uh, or for example because the manager is uh, uh, his uncle for example there is no kinship uh, consideration number seven accuracy uh, accuracy uh, is the service performed right the first time uh, or I need uh, or as an uh, employee I need to repeat it again to treat or deal with any faults of course if it is performed right from the first time so uh, it will be no waste time and uh, no time consuming for customer and of course he will finish quickly and he will be very happy uh, also responsiveness can service uh, personnel uh, re react quickly and resolve unexpected problems uh, if there is any problem happened how the frontline employees deal with it uh, um, it is possible to deal with it quickly and uh, without speaking to his manager because he is already empowered but of course he know what he or she should do in dealing with this problem uh, I, I didn't mean that he not to speak to his manager and they behave in bad way I mean that he should behave in good way good manner that make customer satisfied and also not affect uh, the, the organization the interests of the organization many many issues uh, should be considered. I think I forget to speak about accessibility and convenience. Yes. So uh, accessibility and convenience is a service easy to obtain. 
uh, there is no difficulty for obtaining the service to or, go, or delivering service to a customer. For example, if I uh, speak about hotlines, services provided through hotlines, uh, aeroplane companies' hotlines, you'll find it is very, very difficult because you wait a long time uh, until uh, the customer, until, sorry, the customer service employee reply to you or respond to your call so uh, this of course will make customer poor, feel boring and not satisfied all of these eight dimensions should be involved or included in the service in order to say yes uh, as a company in order to say as a company i can i providing qualified service to my customers this is the end of this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, I will be very happy to listen them and uh, answer them in the next lecture. Again, thank you for your listening and see you next time, inshallah. Bye-bye.